What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. Today, we're going to be talking about something that actually sounds like a science fiction. A Swiss startup has figured out a way to transform sunlight, water, and air into real gasoline. Not a substitute, not some biofuel blend, real gasoline that you can pump into a 1985 Audi Quattro and drive it up the Swiss Alps without even touching the engine. Now, before my EV bulls in the chat start panicking and I see you, this is not a threat to the electric vehicle uh, bullish thesis. Not even close, but it is one of the wildest pieces that I've seen in clean tech in a while. And it tells us something about where something important actually about where the electrification um, transition could be heading in the distant 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 future all right so here's the setup there's a company called sin helion spun out of eth zurich which is einstein's alma mater by the way and they just put the world's first industrial scale solar fuel plant into operation it's called dawn and it's located in julich germany right next to one of europe's biggest research centers here's how it works and i'll keep things digestible they pull in ambient air and extract carbon dioxide and water is using an absorption process. This is where it gets wild. They've got massive arrays of mirrors, heliostats controlled by AI that concentrate sunlight onto a tower. We're talking focused solar energy so intense that it heats a ceramic reactor made of cerium oxide to over 1,482 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than volcanic magma, people. Inside of that reactor, the CO2 gets converted into synthesis gas, hydrogen and carbon monoxide. The syngas gets funneled into another section where it's converted into synthetic crude oil. Then that crude oil gets sent to a synthetic refinery and gets converted into what we know as gasoline, diesel, or jet fuel that works inside of any engine without modification. And this kind of ties into everything that we've been talking about with vehicle to grid and um, electric vehicles being like battery packs or, or sorry yeah energy storage systems the interesting thing that i'm getting at is what happens when there's no sun they've built a thermal energy storage system that banks heat during the day and releases it after dark they claim it's 10 times cheaper than battery storage and doesn't need cobalt or nickel this is reverse combustion essentially they're undoing what happens when you burn fuel taking exhaust products and turning them back into energy so who are these people because this isn't some slick garage startup who just uh came up with a pitch deck and helion was founded in 2016 by a team of phds from eth zurich which just ranked number one in europe ahead of oxford the co-founders are gianluca ambrosetti who has a phd in physics and nanotechnology with almost 20 years in concentrated solar power and philip furler a mechanical engineer with a background in solar thermochemistry furler even ran solar chemistry research for the international energy agency before this these aren't just academics either the chief technology um officer philip good has over a decade designing and testing high temperature solar reactors this is legit engineering talent and the core idea it started Started as a thought experiment at ETH. If burning gasoline produces water and CO2, how can we reverse that process? Can we gather the combustion byproducts and turn that back into fuel? Turns out, yes. They proved it in the lab, then they scaled it to a factory. Dawn went operational in June of last year, and they've already demonstrated the fuel works in real vehicles, motorcycles, classic sports cars, you name it. Now, here's where they pump the brakes, though, literally. The tech works, but it's very expensive, like even more expensive than drilling oil out of the ground. Without carbon taxes, government subsidies, or corporate carbon neutral corporate carbon neutral purchase agreements and Helion's fuel cannot compete on price just yet. Dawn is only producing a few thousand gallons per year. For context, that's a rounding era. It's a proof of concept, not a production line. They're planning to build bigger, larger facilities and they aim for mass production by 2027. But we're still years, maybe even decades away from this technology being co uh, cost competitive at scale. So why does this even matter? Because the thermal energy route that they're using avoids massive energy cost of hydroelectrolysis 
and um, hydrogen storage. In theory, it's more efficient and easier to scale than other synthetic fuel methods. If they could pull off modular large scale construction, then this could actually work. And they're getting real traction, guys. Swiss International Airlines and Lufthansa are partnering with them. Zurich Airport just signed a five-year deal to buy 30,000 liters of solar diesel annually starting in 2027 for their buses. This isn't vaporware. It's early, but it's real. Okay, so let me bring this home for the Neo Bulls and EV investors watching. This does not threaten the EV thesis. Sinhalion said it themselves. They're not competing with electric vehicles. They're trying to give the existing fleet of gas cars um, an extended lifeline. There are over a billion combustion engines on the road internal combustion engines on the road that aren't going anywhere overnight this is a solution for them not a replacement for evs and here's something we don't talk about enough the geopolitical reality and this is something huge for understanding why while this tech is viable and cool, it still faces massive headwinds in the world's largest EV market. China has spent the last decade, literally years, that we've been covering on episodes in this show, even this week we've talked about um, investing uh, literally hundreds of billions of dollars into electric vehicles, into EV infrastructure, battery supply chain, charging networks, uh, manufacturing capacity. We're talking about subsidies, industrial policy, the whole nine yards. The government didn't just bet on EVs, they went all in. Beijing isn't going to pivot supporting synthetic fuel technology when they're literally betting their future on electrification. Not only that, but they basically built the EV ecosystem. They're they're at the top of the battery supply chain and they position automakers like NEO, BYD, Xpong, uh, Li Auto as future global leaders. So that ship has sailed, the infrastructure is built, the factories are running and the policy is set. So from a Chinese market perspective, which is critical for NEO, synthetic fuels aren't even in the conversation. This is a European and maybe Western solution for legacy fleet. But China, they're doubling down on electrification and that's the lane that many of us are invested in. If anything, this validates what we already know. The energy tra transition is multi-dimensional. It's not just EVs versus gas, it's battery tech, hydrogen, grid infrastructure, solar, and now synthetic fuel. The world is throwing everything at decarbonization, and that's bullish for the entire clean energy ecosystem. Keep this on your radar, but don't overreact. Synhelion is not publicly traded. This won't impact NEO's growth trajectory, battery demand, or the Chinese EV market in the next five years. But in 10, if big oil or a sum of uh, traditional automakers dump lump sums of cash into this thing, that's when it gets interesting, though even then it's more likely to be a niche, a niche solution for hard to electrify sectors like aviation or maritime shipping. This is a credibility play for us as someone who's constantly feeding the news through the YouTube algorithms. I can't just watch one lane. The fact that I'm talking about a Swiss team turning sunlight into gasoline shows that innovation is happening everywhere. And the companies that adapt, whether it's Neo, Tesla, or legacy automakers, those will be the ones that win long term. So here's my takes. And Helion is fascinating. It's groundbreaking and it's worth knowing about. But it's not something that you need to trade on today is what I'm saying to myself because I could never give investing advice. I'm just a news guy. It's important to do your own research and come to your own conclusions always with everything and don't take my opinion but i do think that this technology is not disrupting neo's path it's not derailing ev adoption what it is is a reminder that the future of energy is not binary it's complex it's collaborative and it's coming from directions that we may have never even considered stay informed stay objective and remember whether it's batteries rolling out of hefe or solar fuel rolling out of Julich, the clean energy revolution has more than one lane. That's it for today. If you guys got value from this, make sure that you hit the notification bell icon, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, share the video, help us reach a broader audience. All that stuff genuinely does help the algorithm to push this out to more people. So I do appreciate you for that. And that helps me continue to produce content for you guys. It's Wednesday. Happy hump day. This has been Obi with the Quartzite Financial Podcast. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.